See, I'm a replacer. I specialize in being a replacement you. Dude totally jacked my hairstyle. Anyways, while we're in the area of video games, let me talk to you about one. And this time, it is The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Game of the Year edition, mind you. Now, around the time that Skyrim came out, I was playing video games, but I wasn't too much into the RPG genre. But I wanted to be. I was like, okay, I want to know why people go so ballistic over games where you can equip yourself with a certain kind of armor or a certain kind of suit or... You know, level up your 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 players so that then you can be stronger, faster, more durable, as well as add you know. Whereas in the case with the Elder Scrolls games, spells, or in the case with the Mass Effect games, uh, weapons. Now I didn't want to exactly start off with Skyrim because not only was it way too popular that everybody had already talked about it, but jumping right into Skyrim was like jumping into the deep end. So I wanted to start off from the at least the one before, and I decided to purchase Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Three months ago. I'm not kidding you guys, every day for the past three months from at least from the very least of an hour and a half to maybe about five hours a day that's so far my record five hours of non-stop gameplay on this freaking thing i've been playing this game and just recently i beat it so now i am here to talk about it now at the end of the video i will talk about the extra expansion packs that came with the game or at least in this case the game of the year edition but for now let me just talk about the core gameplay the core story and the core elements of Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. I'm gonna start saying Oblivion. I don't want to call the whole thing the, the whole title. It's gonna get annoying. Now with the case of these Elder Scrolls games, each story is gonna be different even though it has a familiar tone to it. Long story short, an evil rises upon the land of Tamriel and it is up to you to stop it. Now how do you stop it and what exactly is that evil and what land let alone realm this game is gonna take place in? It's pretty much different in every single iteration and installment of this franchise. That's the core niche of all these games is that the, each experience is going to be different than the previous one. Throw in some new elements that you didn't get a chance to experience in the previous game and you got yourself a winner. With Oblivion, it was pretty much Bethesda's jump into the next generation of console gaming in their franchise. The previous three were mainly PC games with the exception of Morrowind jumping onto the Xbox. It was Oblivion where they finally made the jump to not only the PC, but also the PlayStation 3 and the 360. I own the PlayStation 3, so I'll give you my thoughts from a Sony fanatic. In the end, the game ended up being great. Right from the get-go, they let you know that this is not going to be a linear storyline. You got the main quest along with various other side quests that you can do at your own time in the sandbox that is called Cyrodiil. And the game likes to throw you off a little bit by not calling the main quest the main quest. Each section of the main quest has a different title, so every time you add a new quest, it is up to what the context of that quest is or what that quest has you do that will make you go oh, Okay, that's a story quest. So obviously if I do this quest I'm gonna progress more in the story and get closer to the ending on the side You will get side quests that will simply just give you an abundance of things to do in this place There's so much that you can do so much that you can gather so much that you can advance in you can join guilds from the fighters guilds to the mages guild to the Thieves Guild, each one specifying in different aspects of you as a player. And overall, it is up to your decision. And every single time, this is almost a guarantee, every single time that you play this game is gonna be different than the previous one. Even if you don't want to, the game will throw you curveballs. For a particular reason that I'll get to later on in this review, I had to replay the first 10 hours of this game. And let me tell you, the first time that I played the 10 hours of this game was different than the second time that I played it. And the game has enough rich, dense material that I get a, I get hooked every time I play it. Each and every single time I get a new side quest logged on, I'm, uh, it's, it's freaking 1 or 2 in the morning and I'm like, uh, just, just one more side quest. Okay, got that done. It's 2.30. Wait, I got another side quest? Uh, I'll go ahead. I'll just do that one. This along with World of Warcraft are known for doing this. The only perk here is that you don't have to pay the monthly fee. As for the main story, the main story is really fleshed out and it's, it has a lot of characters that have nice little arcs to them, really deep background to these characters that make you care for them. There were several instances where I was gasping knowing that something happened to this character and something happened to another one. Now this is not exactly a bad thing or a good thing, but I just happened to find it funny the fact that the story is a little bit short. Now when I say the story, I mean the actual narrative of what happens here to what happens here to what happens here now actually doing the story quest you handling these quests and having to solve the puzzles having to talk to people having to vanquish monsters let me tell you right now that along with all of the side quests that I completed and out of those that I haven't even completed half of them I tried and I just can't because I, I I'm not a completist and I get kind of tired at some point but since the last time I played it I have officially logged in about a good 
80 hours, at the most, 80 hours into this game. Here you feel the entire journey, especially due to the fact that, like I told you, I've been playing this game for the past three months, so it feels like a really long trek, and if a game makes you feel that way, it makes you feel like the characters are... It's obviously great. The main story as well as some side quests that involve story elements have nice little twists that keep you going and keep you addicted to keep doing more with some neat puzzle designs and great combat. Now before I go on, I need to get a rant out of the way. I'm about to rant a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and address the reason why I had to repeat the first 10, maybe 15 hours of the game. My number one complaint about this game is the fact that I just, that's just it. I had to restart the game because of a really stupid side quest design and this stupid side quest design gets repeated at least two more times but fortunately the two more times the other two times that this does happen I didn't have to repeat it because of a certain circumstance and I'm gonna to explain to you why I did this side quest where I get I'm not gonna go into much detail but let's just say that I get stuck in a world with monsters and the only way to get out of this world is to de defeat or kill the monsters however my problem was that I wasn't experienced enough I didn't have enough uh, I wasn't leveled up as much or as needed to take on these monsters. These monsters were like super strong. I was a level 3. These monsters were probably at the, at the least a level 6, maybe even a level 7. That and they were trolls. Trolls never fight fair. They were literally using all of their limbs. They were going like this and they were kicking. It was frustrating! And here I have a dilemma because I can't level up because I can't kill these monsters. But at the same time I cannot get out of this world until I defeat these monsters. So. Where do I go? Henceforth, I have to start the game over because I, I couldn't go anywhere. Well, what am I supposed to do? There's no reason as to why I should have to restart the first 10 to 15 hours of the game and waste and, you know, feel like I wasted this whole time. I, I, I played uh, this game for all this time for nothing. So now I have to spend about another two, three, maybe four days because I would only, at the time that I was playing the, those first 10 or 15 hours, I would, I would only play about at least two to maybe three hours a day. Hence, I had to wait at least a good two, uh, uh, at least a good three, four, maybe even five days before I finally got to the point where I was before. And like I said, this stupid quest design gets repeated two more times later on, and mostly they're in side quests, not in the main story, but in side quests. Fortunately, however, those two other three times didn't make me stuck, they didn't make me, you know, having to repeat the whole thing all over again because I was experienced enough. I said to myself, okay, if you see something suspicious, if you see something that you know, you're obviously gonna get stuck in, don't do it, go level up, go go fight some enemies, go fight in the arena, and level yourself up, incre increase your, ma your major skills, and then you can become stronger to take on this side quest. And that's actually, in disguise, one of the great things about this game is that it genuinely made me feel like I'm in the game, hence the whole definition of a role-playing game. So, in de by definition, that was awesome, and I finally understood I guess that was a bit of a blessing in disguise is that in being so fucking frustrated by the fact that I had to restart the first 10 or 15 hours but at the same time be cautious about the next side quest I'm going to be doing by leveling myself up was like I was saying a blessing in disguise because it made me invest in more in the game as well as the RPG genre which is precisely what I wanted to do so Yay. Now where this game exceeds beyond bounds is its sound. The musical score is amazing. I really want to know who did the score. I'm going to have to look it up. The voice talent is magnificent and the sound effects are great. Visually, however, is where I'll have to nitpick a little bit. One is that the graphics are obviously dated. This game, I believe, came out in 2007, so by now the graphics do look a little dated, but at the same time I can't you know, knock it down a peg for that because it did come out in 2007. You know, every now and then you're walking down the forest and you manage to notice that the same branch of leaves is replicated and moved at the exact same, you know, times to make it seem like wind is brushing through the through the trees. From a distance, that looks awesome, but when you go at, get up close, the date of the graphics starts to show. There's some texture popping here and there. There's actually quite a few frame rate issues, especially when there's a lot of things going on on screen. And there are some glitches. I mean, no game is complete without its glitches. Here, however, there were a few that literally frustrated me that I'm like, okay, this is definitely hindering the performance of the game and my performance as a player, and that's not good. For example, there was an instance where I got in trouble with the guards because I wasn't supposed to trespass a door when the little red marker is on. But the door that I opened did not have the red marker. It, I, it was beige, meaning that I can enter this door it was actually a gate to a city but when I went through it this guard comes up to me and says hey you're violating the law either pay the fine or go to jail and I'm like seriously that and going back to the sound I kind of didn't appreciate it that some of the the crew behind this game took 
people's voices and you know remix them in a very awkward manner like sometimes i would encounter a character and when they say their first line when they greet me sounds in a particular voice but then when i select another you know an option to, for them to say something to me like if i ask for a rumor or for some sort of detail on the city they they speak in a completely different voice or at least a different accent or different tone i mean I'm, i might be exaggerating when i say completely different because it still sounds like if it's a male it still sounds like a male it still sounds like their age but the accent and the tone and the heaviness of their voice would differ within the same character so it's like they got lazy and they just mixed and matched the voices but again i'm just nitpicking at this point overall at its core the elder scrolls 4 oblivion is a really 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 good game but because of that stupid side quest that sent me back immensely and that gave me a stomach ache i'll just have to say that the game is great and it could have been amazing if it wasn't for those performance issues as well as that stupid side quest design and just a little more conscience to the player would have been nice. But what this game did to me was brainwash me into feeling very much invested into not only the story of the, of the game, the characters of the game, but as well as the RPG genre in general. That's a definite plus. I gave The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion an 8.4 out of 10, which is a B. Like I said, if it wasn't for those performance issues or that stupid side quest design, this would have been like an 8.9 or maybe even a 9.0, but damn, damn. Damn! Now, really quickly, I will talk about the expansion packs included in the Game of the Year edition. The two expansion packs that it comes with is, one of them is called Knights of the Nine. And pretty much what it is, is a bonus side quest that involves another light, a lot of mini side quests attached to it. I'm not going to go into much detail about what it is, or what you end up getting at the end, or how it plays through. But let's just say that out of the two expansion packs that it, this comes with, Knights of the Nine is definitely my favorite. There's a huge payoff at the end that helped me beat the game in general. And I just felt like it flowed way better than the other one in this universe of Cyrodiil. And I was just having a blast playing this expansion pack. Now the other expansion pack is called the Shivering Isles expansion pack. Which pretty much incorporates this whole new world into this world of Cyrodiil through a magical but strange and eerie door. Like I said, I'm not going to go into much detail, but basically this whole area called the, uh, the the Shivering Isles that is ruled by this king named Shagorath who is in charge of anything that goes crazy in this place pretty much adds a whole new adventure to the ones that you already have and basically you have uh, like I said before there's this whole world with new people new environments new monsters that you've never seen before and it, you do in, in, indeed become invested However, there are some similar glitches that pertain to the original Elder Scrolls 4 game. One, there's still a stupid side quest that sent me back about a good maybe 3-4 hours or so. It still pissed me off. And it cannot save itself from the original technical issues and bugs that the original game couldn't. But overall, the technical aspects of the Shivering Isles expansion pack, it's where it's, it, it exceeds. The, the, the voice town, especially of Shergoreth, who's the king of this you know crazy-ass place, he, the way his character is written and the voice actor, I don't know who it was, but them two brought him to life. I was just cracking up and I enjoyed seeing his character on screen, even though this is not a movie. But when his character was in the game, it was awesome. The environments, the, the town designs of this place, the monster designs, it's all great. But after some time, I feel like I was going crazy. And in the end, I ended up liking the Knights of the, the Flow and the immersive feel uh, uh, of, of, of the Knights of the Nine expansion pack being incorporated into the the Cyril Del universe way more than I did with the Shivering Isles. Now I'm not going to give ratings on those expansion packs but let's just say that the Knights of the Nine is amazing whereas I thought the Shivering Isles expansion pack was just pretty good. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to click the subscribe button to check out my other reviews. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll post the description in the link below. I'll post the link in the description below and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.